store is open. We're open until 2.30 today. But I thought let's do something a bit different. If somebody walks in, then I'll stop. But um, I got another one of these gorgeous uh, artworks. And I thought, well, I'm doing it anyway. Let's go live. And you can join me in the process. If you've got any questions, you can ask them. If you're watching this back afterwards, let me know. Um, but I'm a bit excited about this. So I will go live this afternoon around 3, 3.30 with our uh, Friday live. So this is a little bit different. Um, and I might pop up a few times throughout the day. So if you recall, last week I created, well, I didn't create the artwork, but I changed up this artwork. Um, I got this one at a local auction. Absolutely loved it. Uh, it was one of those things I was standing there. It was not on my list for the day. Um, but nobody else wanted it and they're holding it up, waving it around. I'm like, you know what? That's mine. So I brought it. Um, and then my husband comes home the other day with this one. So if they're like some sort of needlework, it's all wool. It's re they're really, really beautifully done. Now I know the other one came out of a estate. So I'm wondering if this one did as well, which is pretty exciting. I've never seen them before. And then all of a sudden within like a month, I get two of them. So they're super pretty, but as you can see, they're really outdated in the frame. So we're going to turn this into this with the beautiful carbon frame and the backboard. Now I wasn't originally going to paint the backboard of this one. It was like a creamy color, which matched the picture beautifully. But <laughs> as always, the stickers in auctions, there's like a lot sticker for whoever, so they know who the um, owner is of the product. And then there's a, um, sorry, there's a sticker for whoever owns that, that particular product, so they know that they're paying the right people. And then there's an actual lot sticker for what auction order it, it is in. And both were stuck to the backboard, which when peeled off, destroyed the backboard. So we fixed that. So I painted it and it's come up beautifully. And this one you'll see here at the top, it's just a couple of little bits there. Nowhere near as bad as what that one was. But looking at that one now, there was one, oops, I'm gonna drop something. There was one down here at the bottom and you can't tell at all. And there was another one up here and you cannot tell at all that I've fixed it. So we're going to take it out of the frame. I haven't done anything to this at all yet. Um, and the store is open. So if somebody walks in, I will stop, but I'm doing this anyway. They've got these cool little things that stick in the back of the frames. I actually prefer them, although that one was really hard to get out. Um, I actually prefer these to the normal little tabs that you push up and down for. Ooh, I'm getting filthy. Um, for, oh, this one's not going to come out though, is it? That you normally get in front of frames is what I'm trying to say. See, I get talking and then my brain can't keep up. Come on, there we go. Alright, so pull it apart completely. The easiest way to do this. There's no glass in these. And I'm just going to slide it out like that. Okay, all right, so we've got our frame. It's just your standard gold frame. It's pretty, it's all right. It's got a few scratches, which is to be expected with an older piece. But, so we're gonna paint the frame and we're gonna do the prep first. And that's gonna be this first live today. We've got our backboard. It's got this really nice bevel on it, which I wanna keep. Otherwise, if I didn't care, I'd just flip it over because it's white on the back, which goes quite well as well, but I do like the bevel and I think it looks really nice. Then we've got our, art, ooh, got our artwork. This one's actually cut a little bit differently. The other one, this framing was already cut. So that's the back of it. I've never seen anything like these. I think they're really, really pretty. And then some random bits of paper. So we'll pop our artwork aside and our backboard. So I'm not doing anything to the backboard. We're just leaving that be down there. Let me grab this piece of paper. So if anybody falls on it, it will be me. All right. So for prep, really, really basic. 
standard prep that we do for pretty much anything. We're gonna take our backboard first, and we're just very lightly going to sand these two bits. I don't need to sand the whole thing, the paint's going to stick to the paper, no worries. I'm just gonna lightly sand them more just to smooth them down a little bit. Um, I've got an 80 grit sandpaper here. I probably want something not quite as coarse, but this will be fine. I'm really, and I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just going to really, really lightly smooth those out just a little bit. There's also, I think a sticker was stuck on these. Hang on, this is way too coarse. I have another one here. As always, I am not prepared. Let me grab a sanding block instead. So this is one of Purico sanding sponges. Uh, I think this is the 220 grit. So um, they now come in a prep pack, which is 80s and 120s, two of each. And then they come in the standard mix pack as well, which is 80, 120, 220, and 340, I think. So we've just got the 220. Where's my little bit? I'm just really lightly. Yeah, that's heaps better. The 80 grit was just scratching the paper too much, and I don't want to scratch it. I just want to smooth this down. So you can already see it's nice and smooth. This one needs a little bit more. So I'm just, I just want to make sure there's no raised edges. Anything raised or then dipped in, you're going to see. So we don't want anything like that. Just want to make sure there's just. Can you see those little indents just here? They're only just there and we will put a bit of base and blocker over it so you won't notice. But we're just gonna lightly sand those. And the rest of it looks pretty good. This one's actually in really good condition for the back. There has been a sticker stuck on it at some point. You can see the yellow from where it was, but happy. So that's super easy. So reuse your boards if you can, and they're super easy to paint over. All right, for the front, yeah, um, it is metal and we want to make sure our paint sticks and stays put. So we're going to come in with the coarser sandpaper because we want to scratch it up really, really well. And we're just going to go all over. I'm just using 80 grit. Just watch your fingers. Right there, it's a bit wobbly because there's nothing in there, obviously. And just make sure you get it all over. Make sure you get the edges as well. Whoops. The actual edge, not just that side and this side. Make sure you get that cornering. Because that's where it will be touched a bit as well. If it's artwork's generally not touched, but you still want to make sure that you're getting everywhere. So this is just step one for our prep. So all over. This has had a wipe down already as well. Just while it was still in its frame when my husband first brought it home. We always wipe everything down that we bring home from an op shop before it really comes too far into the house and gets touched lots. If you've got questions about anything, now's a great time to ask them. I'm just doing this and thought I let you join in on the journey. We've done that side. So you don't have to sand it heat. If you've got an electric sander on, sander on hand and it's a larger frame, then by all means use it. But I think by hand's fine for what we're after. You just want to scratch it. And by scratching it, you're going to give the paint something to grab onto. The sides of this, these sides are actually got a bit of texture to them already. Uh, but we're just going to scratch them up that little bit more and make sure our paint sticks really well. Okay, looking pretty good. So we've just scratched it up. I don't know how well you can see it. It's just enough. We're not like removing the shine or anything like that. It's just enough 
to remove what we've got. Now, Hello, how are you? Good. All right, guys, I'm going to stop and I will come back a bit later and continue. No, you're fine. Okay, we are back. So that was a good little interlude anyway. So I've wiped all, it all down. There's no dust remaining um, and I haven't wiped my board yet, so we better wipe that. So when I do these little projects, I like to have a little board on my counter. It also gives me a little bit more wiggle room as well. So we have sanded and then we have cleaned it well. Our backboard's also ready to go. So now we're going to prime. Now the color I'll be painting this with is Pure Eco's Carbon. So we're going to go in first with Pure Eco's Basin Blocker in the color gray. We're using gray underneath the black. Gray is a better match for the black. If we use white, our black may need an extra coat. So we're gonna use gray today. One coat all over and we're also going to just be touching these bits that have been rubbed back. Um, so, straight from the jar. I think my jar's almost empty by the feels of it. Oh, we've got a little bit left. More than enough for what we're doing. So this is a primer, it's a tannin blocker. It's fantastic when we're trying to, this brush isn't great, is it? Um, it's great when we are trying to um, block smells and tannins and when we just want some extra adhesion as well. So one coat all over and we're just going to brush it on. I'm using one of our little Montmartre brushes. This is the size 20. Uh, these ones come in a pack of, I think it's a pack of five, for like $13. But they're really, really nice brushes. They've got beautiful bristles. So we're just very lightly going to paint this all over and make sure we get that inside trim as well and this is just going to make sure that my silk finish sticks um, even if I was using chalk finish I would um, definitely prime it it will make a big difference for this metal it just makes sure that your paint's going to stay put once you pop it on there so make sure you catch any drips as well And then we will let this dry and then I'll come back in about an hour or so. So this is like a one day project, it really is. We'll just make sure it's fully dry. I've got the heater on here so it will dry quickly today. We're gonna do this next side actually. Because it's very hard to show you things like this. But we'll come back in a little while and we'll pop our first coat of black on. We'll probably need one and a bit coats. Um, the bit is just touching up any bits that we missed on the first one. So all the way along, just making sure that I do get that inside edge. There's nothing worse than realizing afterwards that you've missed a whole section and just painting it in one direction as much as possible using really light strokes. We're trying to reduce any texture with this. This is why I'm also using silk finish because it is a self leveling paint. We don't want, I don't want texture with this. I want it quite elegant and beautiful. So that's why I'm also using this brush because it allows me to achieve that. Really, really light brush strokes. Make sure I get all my little bits. These are super short lives today. Because <laughs> we're done. All right, so that one's done. Let me, oops, without taking the paint off that I just put on there. Gently move this onto my chair for a second. <laughs> There's nothing easy about moving these projects some days. All right, so we're really, really lightly going to brush just a little bit of paint over these pieces where they're missing. And then what we will do before we put our carbon on is we will give them a really, really light sand with the nice fine sandpaper again. 
just to make sure that they are nice and smooth. We don't want any texture there. And by doing this as well, our paint sort of fills those little grooves a little bit as well, which gives us a nice smooth finish. All right, anywhere else? This one's pretty good actually, it was just there. And there's one there as well. So it's just a little bit, and you know I'm gonna notice this underneath the carbon. It's just enough to fill it in. It's like um, using a corrector on your face when you're, or a concealer rather, I should say, when you're doing your makeup. You're just sort of touching those little spots that need that little bit of help. All right, so we're gonna let that dry. On the paper, this will dry super, super fast. On the frame, it will dry fairly fast as well. It will be dry like within the next half an hour. Um, but I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna do some other things, and then we will come back and we'll paint a coat of silk finish carbon on our frame and on our backboard. We're gonna use the same brush again. Um, I really, really like these brushes. I think they give a really nice finish and it's also the perfect size for the project that we're doing. Using a big brush is just gonna create a bit of a mess. So use the right brush or the right size brush for the project that you're working on. Enjoy the next hour or so and I will see you all again soon. <laughs> okay, hi. <laughs> we are back again. Part three and the final stage for this piece. So um, we're going to paint it with Pure Eco Silk Finish Carbon. But before we can paint, we need to give this just a light little sand. Now the frame is fine, it doesn't need to be sanded, but we just want to smooth out these bits, make sure there's no texture there at all. If we don't, what will happen is once we're painted, you'll see all these bits where we've popped that little touch of basin blocker. So I'm just gonna use the 220 again. We're really, really lightly. Just gonna give it a sand. And focusing on those edges a little bit as well, anywhere where there's a little raise. We wanna make sure that it's nice and smooth and even with the piece. Now that you'll still see it's a little bit, but I find with the carbon, it covers it really, really well. And you don't see as much as what you could otherwise. So really little sand. I'll do these other corners. And once you've done this, you can go straight into painting. Just give it a wipe down, make sure any dust is removed. And then we can paint and do the fun part. So this is Pure Eco Basin Blocker for those who didn't catch part one. So it's now in three parts because we did have to stop after our sanding. So the store's open. We normally don't do lives in the middle of the day, but I figured I'm here anyway. So let's do this. So this has been drying for, what's the time? About an hour. We had a bit of a rush there for a second and I'm only just getting back to it now. So, and as I said earlier, this dries really, really quickly, particularly over the paper. The paper just sort of sucks out all that moisture quite quickly and it's good to go. So, we just wanna make sure that we smooth that basin blocker down as much as possible. A slightly coarser paper wouldn't hurt, but we don't wanna scratch it. Um, so the 220, I feel, is just right. I wouldn't really go any finer than this for what we're doing here. That feels pretty good. All right, and last one. So I'm just sanding that back and making sure that we are nice and smooth. All right, oops. Best thing is with these, once you're done with them, if you find they're starting to get a bit clogged up, just give them a rinse under the tap. Um, a little bit of warm soapy water doesn't hurt. And then make sure they're fully dry. So I like to lay them out in here where it's warm. I don't leave them out the back because it's so cold out there. 
Um, we don't want them to be growing bacteria and mold and all that sort of thing, but they're super easy to, to just rinse out and make sure they're um, nice and clean. So we're just going to use a cloth. We just want a little bit damp. Damp obviously is what's going to catch all that dust and we don't want to leave the dust on there. Just like that. Make sure you wipe down your bench as well, not just the product. All right, now we can go on with the carbon. Now I've got a jar of Purito Silk Finish Carbon here. This is what I painted the other one with. Um, I do have another one on the shelf. This is almost empty. I was scraping, oh no, we've got a little bit, scraping the bottom of the barrel for the last piece. So we'll see how we go. If I don't have enough, it's fine. I have got a chalk, oops, chalk finish here in carbon as well. If I need to, I can always seal it. It's not the end of the world, but I prefer to use the silk and save myself a job. So, oh yes, this needs to be stirred a little bit more. It's separated just a little bit. So the silk you always need to stir. The chalk's pretty good normally. The chalk you can get away with just a quick shake, but the silk uh, does tend to separate quite a lot. And as you can see there, see how crap that coverage is? That's just because I haven't stirred it. So they separate a lot. Let me grab a jar show you this one's a good one so the pigment is heavier than whatever this ingredient here is so it sinks so if i just painted with that you'd get what just happened um, but if you mix it all through properly it will paint properly so if you're ever having issues with it just not covering make sure that it's mixed really well um, because yeah if it's mixed right it will paint on beautifully so with this, I'm gonna try and paint in one direction as much as possible. Obviously it's a little bit hard because we've got this big cutout in the middle and I can come back and do a second coat if I need to. But by painting in one direction as well, we're going to have a nicer finish. So this is painting straight over this card. It's like a really thick card stock. And making sure that I get that inner little circle as well, the um, bevel. It's actually really warm in here and I can feel this is drying really fast, but that's fine. I can do a second coat. Um, silk finish will self-level really, really well. But um, if you find that you still have a few brush strokes, etc., that you don't want, just give it a light sand between coats. That's fine. It's just, it's, it, the paper's so heated up and it's really warm in here. It's quite, it's freezing out the back and I was like out there for half an hour. So of course I've turned the heater up and now I'm struggling because my paint doesn't want to move. So you can see how quick and easy this is as well. So this really is a one day project. Now the silk has a built in top coat, which is why I prefer to use it for something like this. I really don't want to go to the effort of then having to um, seal it as well. I definitely like the ease of the silk finish, but um, if, oh, didn't get any of my brush. If you do want to seal it, say you want to change the sheen, then by all means go in with one of the top coats or with a liquid wax. You can't use the beeswax polish over it, but you can use the liquid wax because it has a natural oil in it that acts as a drying agent. Scraping the bottom of the jar. There's not much left in here at all. But I do like to use up what we've got first. And I'm doing these, I'm doing lots of little projects at the moment. Um, I've just got lots of jars that have got like a tiny little bit left in them. And I need to use it up before it sort of dries out. When you've got next to nothing left in the jar, particularly with the chalk, it will dry up. Um, it needs more in there to keep its moisture. You can spray it down with some water as well, which is what I tend to do but I've just got so many little projects. 
I tend to collect them and then eventually I do them all in one coat. All right, so that's first coat. This will need a second coat just to touch it up more than anything and make sure that there's a few bits here that I can see that I've missed, but obviously I don't want to be touching something that's done. So we'll just leave it. So first coat looking good. You see it's drying really, really fast, but it looks so good already. Right, let me do a little switcheroo. Now we'll do our frame. Oops. I wore all my really good clothes today with no intention. Yeah, brand new jumper. That was good, wasn't it? And carbon's really hard to get out of your clothing. Um, yeah, well, my brand new jumper. This dress isn't new, but it's in new condition still because there's no paint on it. And of course I've gotten paint on everything so far. All right, so our frame, we've just done our basin blocker. We're not gonna stand between coats on this. We don't need to. And we're just going to paint that on nicely. And this is why I'm using a nice brush as well. It will give you a nicer finish. A brush, a good brush really does make a big difference in the finish that you're achieving. If you're not achieving a nice finish, particularly with the silk finish, check out your brush and just have a look at your technique as well. Make sure that you're not overworking that paint and touching areas that are already starting to dry uh, because technique with really plays a part as well. But having a good brush can make or break your finish. You don't have to have the most expensive brushes like this is a third, I think these are $13. They're in, they're in a five pack. They're the gallery series on the website under Montmartre. But they're really good brushes. They're beautiful. So I know you can't see what I'm doing, but we're just painting. I'm just painting the outside edge of the frame all the way around. It's a little bit easier to do it like this I found last time. So I just like to work really methodically as I go, one side at a time, and this way too. I still miss bits, but not as much. All right. Um, and once I've done all of these as well, once we're done and we're finished filming all of these, I will pop them all together and pop them up on my YouTube channel as well, which is just the Paint Brush and Co. If you search it. Um, so it's all in one place because it's a fun little one to do. So now I'm just painting the front of the frame, making sure that I get that inside edge as well. And I'm using the edge rather than going this way, I'm going this way. It's a nice small edge and just gives me a little bit more control. And once my paint's down, I'm not touching it again. I'll get it into camera a little bit. I don't think that's impacting on your... Hang on, yeah, it did. There we go. Notifications pop up and it changes it. Alright, so again, down this side. Go all the way down. Making sure that I get that inside edge as well. I want it like all black. I don't want any gaps there. So I'm just going back along this other side as well because I just realized I missed half of it. Um, spraying this would definitely be easier. I know somebody will ask. Spraying, absolutely, so much easier, but I don't have spray paint on hand. I've got Purico on hand. And um, Purico does not come in a spray. So by hand, and I like, I like by hand. It's very, I find it very relaxing. I love doing little projects like this in between big projects. I just feel like I achieve something so much faster and it's almost, almost, instant results as well, which I really, really like. Okay. 
I'm so excited to put this one up on the mantle next to the other one. And if these don't sell, I don't mind because I really, really like them. We're hopefully going to be renovating soon. So I'd love to put them, I'm thinking actually in our entry because they're just the right size. So I don't mind if they don't sell, <laughs> but they're a super fun little project. All right. So there's part three done. So we're gonna let this fully dry um, half an hour or so. It's drying super fast anyway, because it is warm in here. But as soon as this is dry, we'll come in with um, a second coat. We've still got enough in the jar, only just, but we do. So we'll just leave that to dry now. Hello, we're back for part four. Of course, notifications pop up right at very second. Part four of our frame, so. Uh, we have done one coat of Puri Co Silk Finish so far in the colour carbon. We've got a tiny little dribble left in our pot, which should be just enough because as you can see, we've got really, really good coverage. We've just got a few tiny little spots that we've missed, um, some here on the inside as well. So we're going to pop a second coat onto our mat and onto our frame. I'll show you that as well. So you can see the coverage is excellent, even going over um, the basin blocker, which is quite light. You can see there's a bit there that's not quite as amazing. But overall, two coats with any color is really good. Um, I do find, personally, with the chalk finish, so we're using silk finish, which is the one with the built-in top coat. With chalk finish, the coverage is a little bit better. Um, that's just what I find. I find chalk finish normally I'm one coat and I'm done um, with a few touch-ups. But silk finish, I definitely find sometimes I do need an extra coat. So there's not a lot to see, but I thought I might as well do it live anyway and show you all. Um, so I'm just using the same size brush again. So it's a size 20 in the gallery series from Montmartre. These are on my website and obviously the paint is as well. And for this coat, I'm just looking to get this looking really even. So you can see it's a little bit uneven as well. I'm just trying to get the light to shine on it a bit so you can sort of see. So we're just trying to get it a little bit more even um, so that it looks better overall. This time I'm going to, and I should have done this last time, but I'm just gonna do this inside circle first. Just to get that. I had a mint just before my mouth is burning. Um, <laughs> it's just hit the back of my tongue and now it's hurting. So I'm just getting, sorry, side note, um, the inside of this circle, making sure that I get all those bits, just working the paint in. This bit has been beveled, so it's been cut away um, and it's just a little bit raw, cons uh, com compared to, I'm trying to say, to the rest of the circle. So, got that little bit, and now we try and even it out. Now, we don't need a lot of paint. I'm actually, because we've barely got anything left in our jar, I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of water to it, just to stretch it a little bit. Doesn't hurt, we're, we are right at the bottom of the jar, and we're just looking, we're gonna use the last of this jar pretty much today. Um, so we're just looking to um, do these two pieces. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit thinner. Right, so from one edge to the other. Can you guys see what I'm doing? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. There we go. Something about there. <laughs> so top to bottom as much as I can. And making sure any bits that I've really missed on the last coat that I catch those as well. Paint all over my fingers. It's a good day if I come home with paint all over my fingers though. So there's just something about it. It means that I've achieved something, which is nice. So I'm just going to stick to one direction. And it's a little bit annoying doing one direction on like fiddly bits like these edges. But it's going to give me a much nicer finish, which is what we're looking to achieve. If you have missed parts one, two, and three 
I'm going to, once I'm done, I'm going to download them all, put them all together, um, and put them up on my YouTube, and I will do that. Um, I'll do that this afternoon, because I've done a lot today. I'm ready to sit down for five minutes. So I will do that today for you as well. I did do a nice short little video of the other artwork um, as well a few weeks ago that you can still watch as well if you're looking for a quick, quick tutorial instead. I think it's like a minute. So we're just going up and down this side here. this top edge Oops. so I'm really looking to just make sure that I'm getting a nice finish this time so I'm taking my time and this is why I always put something underneath as well when I do things like this because as you can see the paint really does go everywhere So we're pretty good. So that's going to dry. It looks uneven while it's drying, but once it's dry, it'll be good to go. Now, I'm going to stick this one over here. I may have just got paint all over that table, but that's okay. Right, number two. Let's do our frame. So we're just going to paint the edges again first. It's just a little bit easier, I find. So we're doing exactly the same as the first time. And I find the first coat can always look a bit ugly, but as you get onto that second coat, that's when it starts to look really, really good and all, all comes together. I might have a little bit of paint left in this pot still, so I'll have to find something else to paint. So just like that, nice and smooth. I'm just taking my time. The first coats I tend to just sort of slap on a little bit. Um, I more just want to get them on there. I'm still cautious about the way I'm painting, but first coats for me are definitely just getting the paint on there, getting that first coat done. And then in the following coats is when I take a lot more time and um, I'm a little bit more cautious about the finish that I'm achieving as well. In saying that though, my first coats are still pretty good. They're not messy as such, but they're not, they're definitely not perfect. And I don't focus so much on my technique with first coats. So once you've got all that, and I'll show you this little corner here. So this corner is the corner that I showed you uh, before we started. And you can now see we've got full coverage all the way along. Plop it down. Get some paint on my counter. It's always paint on my counter. It needs to be redone actually. Okay, and now we just do these edges. Again, just making sure that I get any bits that I missed originally. Um, after this coat, if I feel the need, which I don't think I will, but if I feel like it still needs a few touch-ups, I can do them. It's not a big deal. We just want to make sure that we get it pretty spot on. So I'll let this fully dry. Um, and then it's like 1.30, so we'll see how we're going. Um, and I'm gonna be hanging around a little bit today. We'll have a live this afternoon. So I will, try and get this finished. We'll put back 
into its frame today. You don't really need to wait overnight. I just want to make sure that my paint's fully dry before I put the artwork back in, just because I don't want to risk damaging the artwork or getting paint on the artwork, which would just ruin it. So I just want to make sure that the frame is 100% Dry and the backing board as well, because the backing board actually touches the artwork. All right, so look how easy that was. So nice, easy project. One day. Um, and you can transform any frame, um, frames, artworks, backing boards as you just saw. So if you do find a piece of art at the op shop or the tip shop or wherever you find it and you love it but the frame's not doing it for you maybe the backing board's not doing it for you it's such an easy way to update it and still love that artwork as well you don't have to go to the expense of getting it completely reframed by a professional framer you can just repaint it all right have a lovely afternoon